So, with my A-level students, I have... I got all their email addresses, which I didn't have with, and I sent them a link to this Padlet, which had... Sorry. That image. <coughs> and that image alone, and there's no other information. Um, and I've asked them to... That image should be there, look. But it's not today. Yeah. And I asked them to critique it, but also to give their own personal opinion because they weren't discussing work in class, their own or anybody else's, and their skills really needed um, to be practised, but they didn't want to do it in class. So we did this online and I asked them to do it that night, while well, they remembered, and most of them did to be fair. Um, it was very interesting to see who responded first and who responded yeah, most. Yeah. It was not who I expected at all. Um, did they? Uh, did they? Did you ask them to create their own accounts? No, because right. they just followed the they link. Put their names on. Yes. Yeah. I, what I did was actually in the classroom, um, because we don't have a screen like this we can use. So I just opened it up on my screen and just got them to just move their chairs around and have a look around. And I just said, "You're going to get a link to this. You just double click on it. It's really simple." Um, so they didn't have to open accounts. Um, and yeah, all but one actually did it. And he only didn't do it because he forgot. Well, he forgot. He, look, he started Sorry. doing something, yes. Um, and he was mortified that he didn't do it. And he was also quite mortified that he showed that he had been there by typing something and then not finishing it. <laughs> and as a result, on the second one that we've done, he's responded in the first day. Um, yeah, I did give him a bit of hearing. Um, and it's been really easy to use and it's super and I really enjoy it. It's great, I'm going to use it every week. Right, well, I, this is quite a basic Padlet. I tried this out yesterday, it was quite a very last minute put together thing. And I thought it would be something that I could capture some feedback on. Which I think I did, capture some. Probably wasn't the feedback that I actually wanted, but anyway. Um, so the session yesterday was um, a CPD, so Continuing Professional Development session on coaching. And I had seven learners who ranged from, there was a consultant ophthalmologist, there was a physio, there was um, some nurse from mental health, nursing managers who deals with complaints. So there was a real mixture of people from within the health world here. And um, what we did was we went through the grey model and they had a practice of that. So we went through what, sorry? So the grow model. Oh right, okay. Which I've just done my own very simple image here because I thought, well, I could get one from the internet, but I didn't know whether I could, you know, use it. But anyway, I thought I'll do my own. It's very simple. So that's the that is the coaching model. There's a bit more to obviously lots of questions around these different um, coaching um, things. So you, the goal, reality, what's going on at the moment, what options do you have, and what will you do? So they have a practice of that in pairs. And they talk about their own goal. Okay. Just close the tab, yeah. And the other one was the Oscar model. So they had a go at this sort of later on in the session. And very different model this is. That what what people thought about it was that um, the other one was more informal, or they could use it more informally than this one in the workplace because the, the whole thing about the, the coaching element is that they can go back and use it within the workplace rather than do formal one-to-one -one coaching. What I was using as well, I had some had access to some, some little Samsung tablets um, which I'd never used before so that's something I would do, you know, I'd make sure they were working properly next time because <laughs> I only got two of them to work with the Wi-Fi but I had two and I had my laptop so I have about 15 minutes at the end of the session where I got I sort of passed around the tablets and my laptop and I got them to put some of their feedback on there. So it was the question was what which model do they prefer and leave a note where and when you will lose it use it in the workplace. Okay, so I um same last week came it came out of the session on Wednesday. Um and or the week before had an observation book and thought brilliant this is a great way to use for research. Um, entry level students, uh, level three um, with some level one 
So this was my um, this was my personal trial. So I was thinking, how could I use this to research one photographer? So I recreated the Padlet with the questions, with no text. What I also done was looked at um, various uh, differentiation with the questioning. So because some learners, um, I had things like, you know, you know, what is their name and nationality and who were they were born? So we researched um, Philip um, Jones Griffiths. That was the, can you find a YouTube clip? It was a very simple activity for the, some learners to do. Um, I, how can you name a fact about your photographer? You chose a photographer, so it's one fact. So it's like he. So that was they were sort of uh, lower order questioning. Mm. Um, so for the you know higher order questionings, uh, questions that we could identify, you know, describe what's in the image. You know, well, what is in the image? How many people are in there? What you know, where? What kind of people are in there? Where are they sitting? What What do you think they're doing? So that's how I. Um, thought about using Padlet was the actually instead of it all being one group activity it was the same activity divided up so um, we could differentiate between learners. So your use of Padlet? My use of Padlet, okay I was teaching a level two bookkeeping and accountancy um, course and I decided to use Padlet to try and get them to get back into the frame of mind again we'd, we'd had a break of about six weeks for exams and Christmas and what have you, so I thought they'd kind of forgotten what they were been, what they'd been doing. So the first thing we did when we got into the classroom is I set, basically asked them all to sign onto a computer, put the Padlet up, and at first they weren't sure what was happening. I didn't really explain it to them. I just said, right, read what it says, and do what it says, hopefully. And then they all started looking. But then when they actually all turned around and noticed what was actually up on the board in front of you know in front of the classroom, they were they were made up. So oh. it made it really really fun. But the way I used it was, instead of asking them to explain too much on the Padlet itself, I just wanted them to record keywords. So, these are things that appeared. And um, but I went round then and asked random people to explain some of the terms and phrases. So it wasn't necessarily that they'd put them up themselves. I was trying to then use it to try and get what they you know for them to try and explain mm -hmm. the different phrases that came up. And it linked to, because we were changing, last term we were looking at uh, maintaining and preparing financial statements and financial accounts. This term we were looking at the cash book. And a lot of the things that they were explaining, we were doing again this term, so it kind of got them straight back into credit and debit. Um, sales day book we were looking at as well. So it just kind of helped them refresh where, what they had learned and then hopefully try and apply it again to a different concept. So it was really good. Excellent. Really and successful. <clears throat> You'd put so you'd put the wall upon. I put two up. I put discount. How and did I put they credits. get to it? Did you just say? I basically wrote on the board, um, on a whiteboard, yeah. the, the address for the Padlet, and said, and go said to just, this just go to this address, oh, right, okay. and it came up on their computers, but they hadn't looked behind, so they were busy typing things up. Then I think one noticed that what they were typing was appearing on the screen next to them, and they, when they all turned uh -huh. round, excellent. Everything was on the board for them. So, so actually, giving sometimes giving Less minimal instruction, yeah. Made it a bit more fun again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're discovering what it is and what yeah, it does. Yeah, as they're doing it. Oh, okay. So yeah, all I said, all you have to do is double click anywhere and type something in. So that's all they were doing. Then they realised what, what they what was actually doing. So it was really good. Right. It was really successful. They found it really fun because I asked them after, you know, for feedback, and they said they loved it because they'd never had anything like this before. So especially not in. You know, quite dry this subject. Is a really, level two. So what level age two. group age? Oh, range? there's a pro there's a mixture because it's part of a Silex course, so they're all law students. Oh, okay. So a level two law law um, law qualification. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um. So, will you use this uh, use Padlet again with the same group? Yeah. Um. I'm going to try and do it. Maybe it's a good link for each term. To try and remember what they have done because obviously okay. they're broken down mm -hmm. and there's big links and you know big chunks in between where they're not doing any. They, we do a lot of um, summative, you know, they always have a summative test at the end of each topic. Mm. So I think it's a really good way of getting them back into looking at the bigger picture, seeing where we have been and how we're going to start applying these terms to what we're going to move on to next. Mm. So it's a really good link in between the topics. Um, 
And then I've got another group who are just at the end of the part-time degree course where they're just starting on uh, a module that deals purely with sort of professional practice and making steps into the, the world outside of college. So I'm just thinking about where and how I might apply this. Now with the first instance, I had thought that when we periodically have group crits looking at each other's artwork, it tends to be that we go from one space to the other around the studio and I've got some learners with mobility issues and it's quite interesting how everyone's gathered round and I've got one guy who's like this in his wheelchair trying to get yeah. people to yeah. move out of the way. So I thought maybe if everyone is periodically photographing their work yeah. and that at some point I get them in front of a screen and they all have, we can look at everyone's work all in one place and space at the same time and that would be one benefit of, of its possible use.